I have no idea how to start this video. I know what's in the video. I know what you're about to see and what I'm about to say. <sighs> I'm gonna get some blowback for this. I picked up my first art marker in 1989. And since then, we have gone from hazardous markers that were so stinky to safer markers, which don't cause respiratory issues or liver cancer. And where we once had just a couple of marker papers to choose from, now there are hundreds. But despite all the innovation, I feel like we're going backwards. Back to a time when predatory companies were cranking out very obviously inferior products and paying people to say they're great. I'm an artist. I'm used to seeing things differently than everyone else in the room. I'm okay with being the weird one. So I guess this is me taking a stand and disagreeing with the crowd. This new marker paper that everyone's in love with, I think it's complete crap. My name is Amy and I'm a professional illustrator, but I also teach marker and colored pencil art classes. Educational illustration, that's my specialty. And today I'm sketching and coloring a tomato wedge on Ohuhu's latest paper, the Bleed Proof Marker Pad. Now, recently I've been doing a series of videos where I test popular marker papers. Because I have a lot of experience with markers and art supplies, by sharing my honest observations, maybe I can help match you to the marker paper of your dreams. Because there isn't one best marker paper. Heck, there's probably two or three papers that are excellent for you. And they're going to be different than the papers that are best for me. It's all a matter of finding what you like the feel of and what you like the look of. Remember, you can have all the talent in the world, years of practice, lots of skill and experience. You can have all the markers, but it doesn't mean a thing if you're working on the wrong paper. And that's part of my problem today. See, a lot of the videos here on YouTube, well, okay, how do I say this nicely? They're sponsored by the same products they're reviewing. And even though they say they're allowed to give bad reviews, I don't see that happening very often. People don't want to lose their sponsorship, and I totally get it. It's good income. Then there are the people who aren't technically sponsored, but they did receive free product, and they're flattered. I get it. Making videos here at YouTube is not easy, and it's not cheap, so it's nice to be noticed. But of course they're going to like the product, because eventually they want to be sponsored. So as long as we acknowledge the bias inherent in the system, we should be okay, right? Well, uh, when we hit the search button to find information about this Ohuhu paper, we're flooded by raving reviews. So when I was finally able to purchase this paper, I wanted to like it. Of all the papers that Ohuhu makes, I should like this one. And instead, I got I feel like the only person in the world who hates this paper. Remember, paper review videos, they don't work. I talk more about this in my video on Strathmore, Bristol, but the gist is nobody uses markers like this. So the tests are worthless. Do stupid tests, get stupid results. So my video today is not a paper review. It's review-ish. If you like what you see, then you've got some homework to do on your own, but watch what happens today, because I can probably save you from getting hosed. Okay, so let's get the basic details out of the way. The Bleed Proof Marker Pad is the third paper to be introduced by Ohuhu. Now, I'm not totally sure, but I think this is the first paper that's truly from Ohuhu. The other two pads, it just kind of feels like they found a student grade paper that was already in production somewhere and had them make the sketchbooks with Ohuhu branding. This marker pad version is a 150 GSM, 90 pound paper. Now that's very thin 
and hang on tight because it's about to get thinner. This is a gray drawing paper. Yes, you heard me right. I just gave you two very important facts. First off, this is gray paper. It's not white. It's not even close. And it's grayer than the other gray marker paper on the market that everyone complains about because it's gray. So if you're buying this stuff, be prepared for grayness. And next, this is drawing paper. Drawing paper is not good for markers. Look at the label. Ohuhu is very proudly and kind of stupidly telling you here that they're making this paper with the cheapest possible ingredients. This says that they're using wood. And this here means that they're not even using good wood. A uh, little reminder here, wood and markers are not friends. But you don't need to see the label to know that this is not marker paper. Four out of five dentists can tell that this is drawing paper. First, it's thinner than your last alibi. And B, it's toothy. Feel the tooth. <sighs> Look, I can talk specifics and specifications about this paper all the live long day. And that might convince two of you to save your 20 bucks. Maybe it's better if I show you what happened. Before we move to the markers, you've been watching me draw here. I've been using the same generic slice line art in all of my paper review-ish videos. Here, I'm customizing the plain slice shape with tomato characteristics. Does it look like I'm pressing hard? Can you even see the lines I'm drawing? No? This paper is so, ugh, it's so soft that even my light lines here are damaging the paper. Later, when I come back with colored pencil, they're going to start revealing all the little trenches that I'm unknowingly digging into the paper right now. And I'm not even pressing hard. So if you're someone who starts every project with a graphite pencil and you expect your line work to completely disappear, you need to think twice about this paper. Now let's marker. So I'm not going to say much about the green stem and supple process. This is a marker combination that I've used a million times before and I know what to expect from it. So I've got it blending pretty well. My only real complaint is that the two greens on this paper, they're looking suspiciously similar. Under normal circumstances, these are very different greens. But here, I'm not getting the usual value shift on this Ohuhu paper. It's weird. For all intents and purposes, it looks like I used one green marker. My underpaint isn't very effective either. Now, normally, I worry about V22 being too dark and making the green too muddy. It can sometimes overpower YG markers. But here, I can barely see it. This is all really flat when it shouldn't be. It's nothing that I can't fix later with colored pencils. But honestly, I don't like having to fix things. I would much rather get it right the first time. Who? boy, little did I know, there's worse to come. Time out time, because we're like nine minutes into this video, and I haven't even mentioned the most amazing thing about this paper. Every other Ohuhu bleed proof video will be some tender young thing who's coloring squares on one side and then constantly flipping it back and forth, back and forth to see if the inks leak through. And then they'll gasp and use their six years of high school drama classes. OMG, I totally can't believe this. Newsflash, this is bleed proof paper. Bleed proof paper has been a staple in the marker world for years now. And we all know this is never going to bleed through. So either these people don't know much about markers or they're faking it. Back around 2010, Canson and Crescent, both of these companies introduced what we kind of consider to be the first bleed-proof marker papers. I can't remember which one came first. It's not important anyway. These are composite papers. They're two sheets of paper with a moisture barrier kind of sandwiched in between. The wall uses a thin sheet of foil.
and render uses a polymer layer. This is what prevents all of the ink from seeping through to the other side. Over the years, other companies have come out with similar versions. I mean, Sketchbar did a foil version just last year. Mirror pad, get it? It's no big deal. This has all been done before. The only new thing about Ohuhu's version is that it's thinner, cheaper, and wood chippier than ever before. O-M-G. Okay, so back to the Copic coloring. I'm underpainting again with the same V22, and I'm using it where I want the murky red to appear. And already, now that I'm coloring something larger than that green stem, this is where the little cricket on my shoulder started whispering in my ear. He's telling me something is wrong. And you can see it right here. As I'm starting these flicks upward from the bottom, look at how dark the origination points of those strokes are getting. And I'm pointing these out to you right now because these areas, they're a problem later. And I want you to remember that right now, I didn't hang out here adding tons of V22 or red to every square inch. I'm using light layers. So what's about to happen should not happen. I want you to notice something here. See how I keep getting startled? My hands, they like freeze. I can't help this. Many F-bombs were thrown, which is exactly why I turned the microphone off when I color. So what's happening here? Think back to the beginning of this video when I told you that this Ohuhu paper is extremely thin compared to other marker paper. Then I told you how this paper is really two sheets of paper that are kind of glued together. So that already too thin GSM measurement, cut that baby in half because this is really nothing more than two sheets of 75 gram paper glued back to back. Yes, the whole page is 150 grams, but you only have access to half of that thickness. You cannot make an NFL linebacker by gluing two skinny guys together. We don't use alcohol markers on 45 pound paper for a reason. And it's the same reason I don't wear a bikini. <sighs> Look at this little wet spot and this shiny patch. The ink is forming puddles and it's spilling out wherever it can because the ink has nowhere to go. This paper is too thin for markers. There's not enough paper here to hold the ink. Don't be silly, Amy. Use less ink. Well, I'm not using a ton of ink. This is only my second layer, and I haven't even blended yet. If you're someone who colors light to dark, watch this test and think about how many layers you typically use, because you can't use this paper. This paper is gonna max out long before you're even ready to blend. What you can't see on camera is that my paper is developing sticky spots. And that's kind of why I keep freezing and panicking, because I see that darkness and I know what's coming. When the alcohol marker ink evaporates, the colorant that's left behind, that stuff is sticky and gelatinous. You normally never see it because the jelly is like embedded down between the paper fibers. But this paper is so damn thin, it can't happen that way. So these puddles, they keep glinting off my studio lights and scaring the heck out of me. And here's the thing, Ohuhu knows this because they've been warning their video creators that the paper will smear if they're not careful. Smearing and sticky spots, that would be enough to tell any reputable art paper company to cancel production, go back to the drawing board, and reinvent something that actually works. But no. Oh, who, who knows you'll buy it anyway. So at this point, I'm looking at one of the worst marker jobs I've ever done. Trust me, the camera is only picking up the three biggest sticky puddles, but there are a lot more smaller ones. Here in the replay, the skin of the tomato doesn't look too bad, but in person, every area that has R14 on it is a mess. 
the blends are choppy. And the R14, that marker is also picking up some of the dark sticky goo and it's dragging it to other parts of the image. I want to quit. I'm sick to my stomach. This isn't fun. And I'm telling you this because I want you to understand just how easily bad paper can defeat someone, anyone. No amount of skill or expertise will make this paper thicker. Now I've switched over to R12 and here's where everything finally fell completely apart. Right here, right now, I'm at my breaking point. On the best of days, R14 into R12 is a difficult blend. And the key normally to making this blend work is to give the blend extra moisture from the R12. But watch what happens when I try that. I'm going over the R14 with this high solvent marker. I'm waking it up in preparation for blending. I'm being as generous as I can with the R12. But look, this blend, it's going nowhere. To give away the ending, it never gets better. It never gets smoother. And this is why some papers are truly better than others for markers. The fibers of this paper have grabbed onto the red and they're not gonna let it go. And because this paper is so thin, I can't use the usual fixing methods. I can't flood the zone with a high solvent marker. It's already sticky. The only thing I can think to do is just go darker and surrender to the stickiness. By this point, I've already determined that I can never recommend this paper to anyone. Not even stupid Anna who deliberately broke my finger in sixth grade field hockey. This whole side of the tomato is a sticky mess. Oh well, surrender to the goo. As I moved to YR30, it's a kind of yellowish marker, but how would you know that from looking at the paper? Seriously, look at the color of the paper as I lay down this yellow marker. I'm getting really mad here. I can't see what I'm coloring. I'm using R12, NYR30, but as soon as the ink goes down, the paper turns dark gray. I can't see where the colors are. I can't see if I need more ink. I have no idea if the blend is going to work. Why is this happening? Well, in the mother of all boneheaded moves, Ohuhu used a dark gray moisture barrier in the center of their paper. And they did it because they were copying Render's technology. The difference is that Render's paper is thicker and it's a higher quality paper. It's less translucent, so Render doesn't go transparent when wet. Ohuhu's paper here goes dark gray when wet. So good luck to anyone coloring faces and skin tones. The gray phase lasts for over two minutes. Now tell me, who waits two minutes between layers? By the time you can see the color accurately, the ink is dry and you've lost your best chance for smooth, wet into wet blending. Go watch the other fawning marker pad videos. They all kind of skip this gray time. I'm serious, time and time again, too many people are editing out the long period where the marker color is crazy gray. Those that do show it tend to be people who are doing highly stylized coloring. They're using the same technique that they use on everything from fried eggs to space aliens. So they're not looking for feedback from the color on the paper to determine what to do next. They're definitely not worried about developing depth, dimension, shade, form, value, or realism. <sighs> this gray time is a total deal breaker. I need to see what I'm coloring when I'm coloring it. I can handle a little bit of off color, but this is ridiculous. But Amy, you're using Ohuhu paper. Wouldn't it be better if you colored on this paper with Ohuhu markers? Not really. Ohuhu makes some of the worst staining markers I've ever tried. Copic on the whole, they avoid staining inks. That's one of the reasons why Copic costs more. So if I were to work with a set of staining Ohuhu markers on a paper full of wood chips that stains easily, it's just asking for trouble. 
I have the entire set of Honolulu markers here, but I thought I was giving Ohuhu a bit of an advantage by testing it with a better quality marker. Turns out, this paper was doomed to fail from the start. So is this paper all bad? <sighs> I want to be even-handed. I want to keep things positive and say something good about it. But I'm sitting here right now editing the footage. I'm watching how much I struggled, but I'm thinking about you. You're still learning. You're still growing and still searching for your artistic voice. And I can't see how this paper helps you do that. The goal of my channel here isn't to show off my marker skills. If it was, this tomato footage would have been deleted, the project burned, and all witnesses would be signing non-disclosure agreements at gunpoint. Ethically, I cannot recommend anything about this paper. I just can't do it. Okay, so we're getting towards the end of this video, and I'm sure you've noticed, I haven't even touched a colored pencil yet. I always use colored pencil. And you're probably also looking at the struggle bus that I'm on here and thinking back to the tomato thumbnail that you originally clicked on. There's a big jump from here to here, and it was painful getting there. So please don't look at the final tomato and assume that you need this paper to get these results. There are easier ways to get there. There's better paper out there. You're worth it. In tomato part two, I'll show you how I rescued this sticky, splotchy, warpy marker illustration and ended up with something that looks good enough to eat. This next episode will change how you watch marker videos here at YouTube, making you a better consumer of information and a wiser student of marker tutorials. This really is the same tomato drawing, sticky spots and all. Watch here to learn how I saved it.